Hey CrossCart fans, today is all about steering, how to beefing up your steering. I'm working on this on the VF1 XL, bigger frame for bigger guys or a little more room for trail riding or whatever you're into. Now, the whole thing with these steering racks that I use, I use extended bolts. I remove the eye bolts from the ends and I make it so you have adjustable bump steer. Now, the geometry of bump steer can be complex but if you make an adjustable rack, you can tune out all bump steer. It's actually a pretty cool setup and it's worked really well, but there are some guys putting more ground clearance on their carts, increasing the angle of their A-arms. Uh, cross carts typically are like five inches off the ground. So your tie rods from your A-arms pretty much run in a straight line with your rack. But when you put a lift on it, you create this angle here. And what that does with an adjustable rack is it changes the moment of it, okay? The moment is the torque applied to a fulcrum, right? So if this was a straight line, this whole thing would be taking all that stress. But when you put an angle on it, it wants to push it in a different direction. And what's been happening, a trending item, is the guys with taller carts and more ground clearance are bending or even breaking their modified adjustable rack ends. So, simple easy fix for that is in this video. <laughs> Let's get started on it. All right, so what we have here is one steering rack and this rack, it, along with all the other components I use is in the components list, uh, check out the site or the description below for all the cool links. Now, first thing you're gonna wanna do is remove these eye bolts. So traditionally, I would take a graded bolt that's the same thread as the eye bolt and thread it in, make my adjustable rack. Now this being threaded, putting a lock nut in here makes this distance between the two holes adjustable, which is how you tune out bump steer. It's pretty slick. So this bolt even being graded, uh, I looked it up, it's around 500 foot pounds of torque so if you have a 650 pound buggy exerting force at a 45 degree angle, it is enough force to bend or break this bolt. Uh, you could find some extremely hard bolts to use in here, or you can just use a bigger bolt. Now, like I said, the braking strength of this is around 500 foot pounds. The braking strength of this is around a thousand pounds. So you, are nearly doubling it, but you're only adding uh, an eighth of an inch. Basically, it's, it's, it's a ton stronger, and you can just see how much beefier it is. Now, I still did get the highest grade possible of bolt because I'm trying to make this the most bulletproof steering rack for you guys. All right, so first things first, we gotta get rid of these booties. We are going to put them back on but for right now, we'll need access to the threaded part of the rack. For those of you who have never seen how a rack works, there's basically a gear in here, there's grease, and then there's slots. That ratio of that gear to these is what makes your steering easier, that along with the diameter of your steering wheel. This is why I don't use power steering, is because this is a ratio. It's worked out great, the steering feels really nice and at high speeds, it's not too sensitive. Now comes the fun part. Hopefully you guys didn't click off the video when you just saw the bigger bolts because there is a method to this to make it work out really well. So we need to drill this hole out for this bolt. But if you just cram a drill bit in that's the size of the tap for this, you are going to get some craziness here. So basically you just step it up a 16th or a 32nd even at a time. What that does is it self-centers your drill bit. And the bigger you go, the slower you drill it. So let's get this drilled and tapped. So luckily it says it right on the tap. This is a half inch 20 NF tap. And it's telling me to drill to 2964. So now I'm just gonna run through my bits until I get to one that does not go in there. And this is the first bit I'm gonna use. And then I'm just gonna run up a size at a time, hogging this out until it's 2964.
Now, once you have your hole drilled to the correct size, you're gonna get your tap. Now, you want this nice and clean, get an air hose, clean it out, dump it out, whatever. And what I did is I took the depth and I just marked a stopping point. Uh, this being a bigger tap, it's gonna be hard and it's not gonna wanna break as much, but it can still get caught and ruin your whole day. So I take the don't get greedy approach, right? So one in, half out, or half in, one out. Um, don't try to go too deep on a single stroke. Um, and after every four or so turns, I'll pull this thing all the way out to get all the scraps out to get a nice clean tap. Uh, that's just for the guys that don't tap much. So it looks like this is the right size. Now I know you see the rack itself moving and I probably should have taken the precaution and locked this instead of using the body of it. Just, uh, just to let you guys know, there is a flat spot on the other side. So I think for tapping, I am gonna do that. Now you are gonna want some kind of lubricant. I use Tap Magic. I love this stuff. It has made cutting and tapping and anything that needs lubrication so much nicer to do. And I'm kind of liberal with it. It is night and day difference using a tap lubricant. All right, so you wanna start nice and straight. The bore is gonna help you self-align, but if you start crooked, you are going to end crooked. So take a look at it, 90 degrees off. Just get yourself a good start to the tap. There we go, there's a good bite. So I'll bring it around once because it's the start. And then I'm just gonna back it out, get those threads cleaned out. It's gonna feel good because of that tap magic, but don't get greedy. That's my saying when it comes to tapping, don't get greedy. Do your due diligence. You're only gonna do this for about 10 minutes and then you can move on. There's no need to hurry. There's four. So I'm gonna run it all the way out and see all the stuff collecting. That stuff can ruin your, your tapping. All right, so once you have that, you can check your big A bolt. Thread it on in there. Oh, look at how nice that is. Nice, and there's room for the locking nut. So, and that leaves a lot of adjustment for bump steer. Wash, rinse, repeat for the other side. All right, so now we just take the rack to the cart, and this is just one and a half inch square tubing left over from the jig, and I cut the end of it off so I could just mount it on one and a half inch tube. I drilled some holes, put some lock nuts behind it, and voila, we have an easily removable rack. Now before I did have the bolts welded on the back side, but you have to pull it up off the bolts to get it out. This way, when the bolts are removed, you can twist and remove so you don't have to pull your end links to pull your rack. Next, what you'll want to do is center your rack. We are doing steering geometry, so the better we have it set up, the better it's gonna be in the end. Looks like it's gonna be three and a half inches per side to center it. I'll just add a couple clamps to make sure it doesn't move while we're working on it. Probably overkill, but why not? All right, so now we have our bolt, and remember, we want adjustment. And for this, I'd say three threads minimum. So I'll put three threads in. There's one, two, three, right? Now from here, I want adjustment in and out. So I'll half this up. Now we're gonna build the rest of this off of that measurement. And remember, you can make this shorter or longer, especially if you have more threads on your output. Uh, these were the only ones in stock. You may have to special order hardened bolts with more thread on them. But since I'm doing the extended arms, 
Remember we're matching the front track width to the rear track width. So our tabs are long because this is our ATV donor we used, which is a Raptor 660 or Raptor 700 R. Now, as far as bump steer goes, uh, bump steer, because we're making this rack adjustable, we can adjust our bump steer. A good starting point or the actual geometry of it is you want your tie rod end link to be exactly lined up with your A arms, okay? When that is lined up, the geometry of everything matches. So if your A arm is significantly shorter than your lower A arm, this needs to be really long to line up in that plane. Same as if it's pulled in a little bit, you want your end link, the actual end link, not the end of this bolt, but your actual tie rod end link lined up with that. Now, the reason that this is longer is because it's from an ATV and ATV doesn't have a rack. All right, so just for a visual reference, uh, and also for measuring reasons, I actually put a straight line between those two pivot points and I will take a measurement from here to the intersection of that line. It looks like it is exactly one inch, okay? So that is my measurement to the base of the bolt. All right, so now I just transpose all of my measurements on my bolts. I like to come in five eighths of an inch to give meat to the other side, right? Now I'm using one and a half inch, three sixteenths thick flat bar because we're really beefing up that strength. So from the hole or the intersection, it was one inch. So our hole is going to be there. One inch away is going to be where we cut it off. And that's why these are adjustable is if we don't get this perfect, we just unbolt it or bolt it in. Now, another factor is the bolt head itself. So I will mark the bolt head. I'll take the tie rod end and I will see if there is clearance from the bolt head. All right, so next we'll need a base plate. Now that's pretty easy. We just take the link we're going to use, take a measurement off of that. Three eighths plus three eighths is six eighths or one and three quarters. An easy way to verify your math, or you can probably just do it this way if you want. Put your tabs on there, see if it checks out. And finally, to finish this out, we want to center a hole on it. Now, if you need a little more room for your end link, you can grind some of this off. All right, so next up, I'm going to put the end link on here. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I have a washer. I'm gonna put a washer in here. Wow, that looks pretty spot on to me. Let me get you in the right angle here. 
Look at that lineup. Now, like I said, this is adjustable. So if we want, we can run it out here. And obviously we'll have to take the shock off or the spring off and run this through its deflection to see and tune it out. Once we have this where we want it, we run the lock nut in, put the boot back on, we're golden. All right, so I just got a set of tie rods and I cut 15 16 off of each side. We'll see how that sorts out. Not bad at all. Now we have the adjustment of the tie rod, but adjusting the tie rod does not get rid of bump steer. That's a common misconception. All right, so now what we're looking for is as we move the wheel up and down, any deviation from straight. Now, since these are all on the same plane, the same pivot, the same everything, this should stay completely still. But if it doesn't, we can adjust this in or out depending on which way the wheel moves. So let's go through. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it looks like we were spot on with our measurements and alignment. Well, cross car fans, that's it. Super, super tough steering. Lots of radius and zero bump steer. Oh yeah. So nice. So nice. I love it when it all comes together. Now, one last thing you'll have to do is your rubber boots are for the three eighths bolts. We have half inch bolts in there now. So you'll need to drill out these little aluminum keepers for half inch. It's super easy. I'm not going to show it to you. Put your booties back on, put your zip ties back on. And you've got an awesome front end that easy. Now, just to cover it again, you see these long tabs here. I'm planning on boxing these. All right. So it would have been silly to finish all the boxing and have to move something an eighth inch or a quarter inch if I like something more extending the wheelbase or shortening it. So I will do a solid mock-up before I box things and finish it up. Till next time, enjoy the build.